So we're going to work out of the yellow book. The blue book, if you get the blue book, it's the same. We're in chapter 3 now. So normally the order of how much people hate things in math, uh, definitely at the top is word problems as always, right? Which is unfortunate because that's like you know, real life use of math. Yeah. And then the second thing that is normally about is like graphing. Graphing's up there somewhere yeah. in the top three, right? You don't like it? I like it. You like it? Okay, good. I like that. I like to hear that. I don't hear that enough. Um, So we're going to start with the real basics, and then uh, we're going to leave nice and early today, by the way, so just get ready for that, mentally prepare for that. Um, so I'm not going to be my head. I mean, because I want you guys to have a nice day. Uh, blah, 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 blah. Let's just get right to it. I'm not going to go. This is stuff you should have done before. This is page 33. So we're used to the normal that we've already been doing this with interval notation and stuff and graphing inequalities. We have one number line. But thank God we don't live in a one dimensional world. Right? So we all just live on a line and we're walking around, and wherever you're born is basically that's where you are. You can't jump over somebody because there's no third dimension. Oh shit, hold on. That's weird. So that's just one dimension. When we draw a number line, that's one dimension. So if I'm talking about trying to find something on the surface of the Earth, what do we use to find something on the surface of the Earth? A flow. True, but if I wanted to find a oh, boat, latitude, latitude, longitude, right? And I know this is a very classic way to explain X and Y because that's, a, that's the most <laughs> practical application of the Y and X axis is latitude, longitude. Longitude, longitude, lat looks like a ladder. So that's a way to remember longitude, latitude. Anyway, you guys can we all know latitude, longitude, right? Please tell me you do. Pretend like you do, even if you don't. Okay. So if I wanted to, uh, if I lived here and I wanted to find somebody's house, they live two blocks back and one block down from me. So maybe this is in, has anybody ever been to Utah? Uh, I had a Mormon friend, I went to Salt Lake, and I'm like, holy crap, the roads are all brown. I'll just straight. Anyways, uh, I come from Virginia where the road intersects itself sometimes. Um, what does that mean? Negative 2, I'm looking at that first point, negative 2, 1. So it's in alphabetical order. I'm going the x axis. Which one of these is the x axis? Yeah, this guy. Oh, yeah. The one with the x on it. There you go. There's so many Spanish things. And the y axis is the one that's like that. So the y is the new thing. The x is the one we've used before. The y, bless you, is the new thing. And just to blow your minds for a second, we live in how many dimensions that we experience? Three. Three. I like it. And you can say fourth dimension for time. You can say 11 dimensions for string theory. Let's just stick with three. So there's another axis that comes out like this. It's the z axis. I love it. It's crazy. No way. Look at you go. Uh, if it wasn't Z, I would have said that they should have made it a freaking Z. So how do I find, well, let's just stick to two right now. How do I find the point negative two, one? Where do I go? Back to. Up one. Up one. I like it. You guys, is that cool? Yeah. So it's exactly like saying two blocks over and one block up. And that's how you get to somebody's house. Right. So that point negative two, one, it's always X comma Y. It's always alphabetical order unless they say otherwise. So I go back to up one. So what about three negative four? Where's that? Um, sorry. Yeah, right three. So on the x-axis I go three. Bottom four. Up. Down. 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 Negative four, down four. Down. I like how everybody's like, no. Alright, so that's that's you can't that's easy. I have I just have to say that. That is pretty easy. Is that cool? Please don't feel bad if it's not, but you need to come see me or something. 
what about what about zero three? Where's that? Yeah, how far do I go left and right? None. And then I go up. I only go up three, so that's it's going to be right there. It's on the y-axis. I like it. So, anybody know another name for that point? Then that is the y-intercept. If it was a line, that would be the y-intercept. It's where it hits the y-axis. It's the y-intercept. So, what about this point here? Oh, you got to have one. There it is, right next to each other. That's crazy. What the first number is x? Which direction is x? Left and right. So negative four would be back four. Here. Up and down, none. So I stay right there. Please notice how I'm labeling the points. There's problems in the homework that are just like this, and don't turn in. <laughs> blah, 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 blah. There, Jeff. There's the end. <laughs> Label the freaking points so it's I can grade it, right? All I can do is just throw the your pen at the thing and say maybe something do that. G. G. What about G? I like it. It's got a fraction in it. Oh shit. <clears throat> But how far do I go on the x-axis? Half. 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 So I just go, I, I approximate it. It's the half, right? Yeah. So I go here. I don't put a point yet because I'm not done moving. And then I go down, down one. So that would be where g is. Yeah. So is that, do you guys see that? Yeah. So fractions don't freak out about it. I'm not going to make you graph 4 over 29. That's insane. But you should certainly be able to handle half points, right? Maybe even quarter points. Where were the points? Negative two and a quarter, uh, three. <coughs> Negative two and a quarter, and then up three. So right there. So that would be point. What is that? Point J. Good job. Right. Okay. So how's that? Any other questions on that? I mean, that's. That's a skill you should be coming in with, really, is being able to plot points. And even if you didn't, that's that's all you're going to do. So uh, the thing that oh, before I get too far, the quadrants uh, we weren't around when they created them, so we couldn't suggest that them to go clockwise. So they went anti-clockwise, right, counterclockwise. So this is quadrant one. This is quadrant two. Quadrant three. <coughs> quadrant four. Make a four there is. So they could, so the homework says, plot this point, which quadrant is it in? I just got to remember how to do the quadrants. Why are they called quadrants? Because it breaks it up into four, four squares. No way. Right. All right, so sometimes, math people, we make sense. Sometimes. 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 Thank you for making that point. <laughs> oh, so here's something. I like this. This is the U.S. Internet users in millions during the year X. Anybody know what this means here? This is a break. It means that's zero, right? It's always zero, zero. But what's my first X value? 2010. Do I really want to go one, two? All right, let me get to 2010. Let me just tape together 18 million pieces of paper. So, so this is this is a break. It says start at zero, but then break and, and start at 2010. You're skipping a lot of stuff because there's nothing down there. Is that cool? Yeah. So this would be the point what? I mean, the x value what? 20, 2010. So incredibly enough, this would be 11. That's the same. All right. So what about this axis? What about this axis here? What could I do? Yeah, but in this case, it's okay to, you could do a break there also. And then what scale do you think I want to use? What's the lowest Y value? 220. What's the highest one? 251, right? So if I do, maybe I do 220, 230, 240, 250, 260. Do you see that? So... Uh, normally you don't want to do the other. You don't want to break on the y-axis, but these y values are so close together. If I did 100, 200, 300, all the points would be, uh, well, we can do, let, let's try to do that. Let's do it more generally. If I did do 100, 200, 300, let's try and see what happens. This gets a little bit difficult. Right, where's 2010 go? 221. Yeah. 221. Is this cool? Do you guys see how that's the point 2010, 221, right? <laughs> Just wrote it that way. 
So I go to 221. Where's 221? Where's 250? Here's 225. Do you guys see how I'm getting that? Halfway between is 250. Halfway between that is 225. So 221 would be about right there, roughly. 2011, 229 would be about right there. So your choice of scale will affect how much you can see on the graph. Yes? I would have done um, 100, 150 to Well, don't do that because uh, what you pick here sets the scale. So then you can maybe you can do 50, 100, 150, 200, 250. That would have been good. I like it. But I just went with the, with the suggestion. So she's saying we could have done 50, 100, 150, 200, 250. That would have been nice, right? It would have, it, what would that have done for me? My points would have been pulled apart a little bit. I would have seen a little better the ups and downs. But since you have a 251, it would be... Yeah, no, I would have just put it right above it. Not a big deal. Is that cool? You guys kind of understand what I'm saying? So the choice of scale is crucial. You want your scale to be nice, so that and what I mean by nice, it's got to be able to. Sh it's all the data points, all the points have to fit in it, and you don't want to squunch it. You know, I definitely don't want to use 200, 400, 600. They would all be squunched down there. What good is that? All right, maybe, maybe, maybe. So real life stuff, the numbers are going to be a little bit more gross. So the scale choice is important when you do that. Maybe, maybe, maybe. That's not too bad. Let's let's try to make this one a little bit better. Now that we've learned some stuff about scale, now let's try to do this without a break. Let's see if we make a good scale for this. So not using a break. Uh, well, I guess we have to correct. Two thousand three. So we do have to use a break. Well, what scale do I want to use in the x-axis, maybe? So if I make this one, what would I make this one? 2003. 2005. Yeah, you could make this 579, but you might as well space it out a bit. You can make that 2004, 2005, 2007, 2009. Then everybody still fits, right? And you're kind of pulling it out a little bit so you can see what's going on a little better. Right. You can write every other one. You don't have to write every single one. Uh, what scale do you, I want to use on the y axis? Let's say I start at zero. I need to make it up to 208. What scale should I maybe use? 50? Yeah, let's see. Well, if we do 50, what happens? 50, 100, 150, 200, 250. So 50 looks like it would work, right? I really want you guys with me. Uh, I would, I would, it would suck to do 1,000. Or sometimes people feel like they have to do the same here. One, two, three. Oh, shit. It's going to take me forever to get up there. So if I do 50, 100, 150, 200. 50. Then, how if I plot this 2003, where would it be? Yeah, 172. So, right in between these is what? 175. 175. So, 172 would be just a little bit below that. <coughs> Let's finish this out. Let's see. 2005, 188 is a little above that. 2007 is 200. It's right there, thank God. 2009 is 208, just a little bit above that. How are we doing? Is that all right? Yeah. Okay, cool. And it looks almost like it's a straight line. I don't have this page. Page 35? Oh. Do you have the blue cover? Uh, yeah, uh, yeah. Oh, so it's, a, it's a, an addition in there. Sorry. Yeah. But you can see it. Okay, so let's, let's take it back down to what we're really going to see. Um, and here's the first, I mean, uh, let me get my own sheet of paper here. Actually, let me use this here. Yeah, good. I like it. So, so what's the point of graphing anything? Uh, with data, I graph stuff so I can kind of get a feel for the trend. So if I graph a line and it shows me the uh, unemployment rate, from 2005 to now, it would go like that, and then it would come back down. So it tells me the history of what happened in the U.S. over the last several years, right? It's a nice visual of what happened. All right. Um, so when I have an equation like that, y equals 2x minus 1, that's the relationship between x and y. Whatever, If I change x, y is going to change by a certain amount, right? 
Uh, so how are we doing? Could you finish that table of values there? What does that mean? That table, the x, y table? What does this mean right here? Plug in. Plug in. Yeah, when x is zero. So what do you get when x is zero? Negative one. Yeah, you get negative one. I like it. So that would be negative one. And you see now I've, taught, I've created a point. There's a point zero negative one that that line goes through. And then what would the next point be? When, when x is 1, what do you get? 1. 2 times 1 minus 1 is 1. When x is 2? 2 times 2 minus 1 is 3. And when x is negative 1? Negative 3. Negative 3, I like it. I'm going to point something out. How much did x change by from here to here? How much did x change by from there to there? Change by 1. How much did y change by? Two. Uh, three. Two. 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 Negative one plus two is oh, one. Two. And look, if x changes by one again, how much did y change by? Two. 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 And of course, that's related to the fact that there's a two there, right? Whatever x does, y gets affected twice that, right? So if x changes by one, y's got to change by two. So if there was a three there, if x changed by one, y would change by three. And that's related to, to the what that we're going to study here very soon. The slope, yeah, rise of a run. If you run a little bit, how much do you rise? Like driving through, uh, driving through the airport. You know that one place where you stop and then the road goes. <laughs> you know what I'm talking about? I used to live down there, go jog, and I was like, oh my god, what did I do? Or in uh, Mission Hills, I used to live in Mission Hills. Have you ever been back there? The stupid steep streets back there, it's like scary steep. It's like, oh shit, my old car would have been like, it's the end of me. Thank you. So then we, how do we plot these points now? Where's 0, negative 1? The point 0, negative 1. 0, negative 1. Left. I like that. You guys are like 0, negative 1. So how much do I go left and right? There? How much do I go left and right? How much do I go left and right? None. None, 0. And then how much do I go up and down? I go down 1. So you ask the right way to answer that question. So when I ask you where's the point, you tell me how much to go left or right, tell me how much to go up or down. None left and right, down one. Do we, do we need to label those points? Not really, because they're just they're all points on this line, so we're good. What about one one? Uh, right, right one. Right one? Up, 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 up one. one. Now you guys know how to talk to it. What about two three? Right two. Right two, right two, right two up three. three. And negative one, negative three. Left one, down three. And what's true about these points, not surprisingly, there's a pattern to them because they all have to work in this equation, right? So there's, there's the line. Right, maybe invest in a rule with Jeff. Yeah, that's, that's decently straight, right? Oh, there's a protractor even. Dude. Yeah. Even angles and shit. Alright, how are we doing? So, I mean, uh, if this table of values, what does it represent? What does that table of values represent? This is kind of an open ended question, but I don't care. What does it represent? It's like, well, I can get the slope from it, but what does it represent by itself? Zero, negative one. One, one. Points on the line. I like it. So, how many points on the line did we get? Four. And tell me, what does it mean to be a point on a line? That means that. This x value, this y, y value has to do what in that equation? Makes sense, which means they have to work in that equation. Let me let you absorb that. And some of you guys are like, well, yeah. But are these the only answers to that? No. no. How many answers are there to y equals 2x minus 1? An infinite number. Every x you can imagine. So I didn't use pi because they... I didn't want to. It's hard to do. Hard to graph, right? I didn't use square root of 11. I didn't use 4.879. But every single x value will have a y value. So what I do then is I take some nice ones, I connect them, and I say, okay, any freaking value you want. So where's pi? Pi is like 3.1. So it would be up there somewhere. You guys with me? So, so if I ask you, can you give me all the answers to y equals 2x minus 1? Can you list them? Uh, no. 
but here, there they are. This is the visual representation of all the answers to that equation. That is the fundamental, the first basic fundamental reason why we graph, because it's the quickest way to answer the question, what are the answers to that? There they are. So don't say those are the answers. Those are not the answers. That's what I used to show this picture. So that point right there, what's true about that point right there? <coughs> Whatever that point is. 1.4 comma 1.8. What's true about it? It's on the line. It's on the line, which means it works in that equation. You guys with me? Mm -hmm. And I know I'm really analyzing the hell out of this, but this is the stuff you got to realize. Any anytime you graph anything, that is what you're saying. If you connect points, all the things you went through also have to work in that equation. Maybe, maybe. maybe. All right, you guys take a minute and do uh, this one. Uh -huh. Everybody got their test back, right? Nobody else came in late? Ah, that's the one. Myself, I'm gonna I'm gonna call this A B C. So you can see the work better. So part A, what do you do for part A? Then? Point A. Yeah. So four times zero plus three y equals twenty-four. Holy crap! It gets really washed down. What drives me crazy a little bit is when people do this and they have the four still here. No. What's four times zero? <laughs> zero. Okay, thank you. Nothing. So that's gone. So divide by three. Divide by three, y equals eight. eight. So what about part B? Plug in zero for y. Plug in zero for y. It's crazy. Four, four x plus three times zero equals twenty-four. This part goes away, so then I just divide six. by so four. X equals six. So when y is zero, x is 6. When x is 0, y must be 8 to make that statement true. And then finally, part C, how do I do that? Plug in 3 for x. Plug in 3 for x. Plus. So then I get 12. Subtract 12. 3y is 12. Divide by 3. y is 4. Crazy. So then I plot these points. So they were really, really nice to us on this problem. We're getting used to this. Me, I would not give you the x, y. You have to create it yourself. And I wouldn't give you a scale. you got to create it yourself. But you can see why they picked this scale. i got to get up to freaking 8. All right, so I got it up to 8. That's good. So 0, 8. I just gave it away. Where's 0, 8? Up there. Up there. Um, up there. This one. Where you were just pointing, Jeff. 6, 0. Right. The same. Same. And then stop. Right, I'll, don't go up or down any. And then three, four? Right, three, up, four. Three, so three's right there. Uh, up, four. up, four. I like it. Do they line on the same line? Yes. Okay, let's use that stuff. If the points, now let me say this really carefully. You see how the very first problem, the very first problem we did, and this is, I know this is not your point, but just to make sure. The very first problem we did, they, they did not have to line up on anything. They were all over the damn place because they're just points from who knows where. If the points come from any equation, they have to make a pattern on it. Now, if they come from a linear equation, does anybody know why this is a linear equation? More specific than that. All the variables have what powers? Zero. First power. You got 
the minute I put like x squared, who knows what that would look like? X squared. If I graph x squared, anybody know what that would look like? Let's do it. Let's do it. <laughs> Sorry. Let's see. I'm going to take number seven, and I'm going to say, screw what you said. We're going to do this. We're going to graph this equation. Uh, what equation, Jeff? I'm going to graph that. Yes, sir. I like it. Well, let's see what that looks like. Now, I, 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 I do this because I want to show you how the process we use doesn't care what the equation looks like. It's just that when I get a, a, a harder equation, I want to get more points because I don't know what this looks like. The minute that my powers of my variables are something not one, it could be insane. Right? When you get to math, if you ever got to math uh, uh, 281 or 280, uh, you would have functions that when you graph them, they look like the spirograph stuff. In fact, I have a function that makes a, a butterfly when you graph it. Wait, what math was it? Math uh, 280, 281. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> but I mean, that's, you know, that's the unfortunate thing is you guys, you could do so much more than this with this. This is just learning how it works on the fundamental level. There's so much more to this. Anyway, so this is our first little baby step into a more interesting function. So if I make an xy table, what's a really good point to plug in for x? Zero. Zero. Always good to plug zero in. I like it. So when you plug a zero in, what do you get? So let me call this number one. So when I plug a zero in, two times zero squared minus five, what's zero squared? Zero. zero times two is zero. So you get negative five. So when you plug a zero in, basically the whole term with x in it goes away. It becomes zero. What's another one good one to plug in? Zero y. Yeah, zero for y would be a little bit freaky. We're just going to stick with x. Yeah, let's put in a one and a negative one. So what happens when you put a 1 in? 2 times 1 squared minus 5. Again, order operation saves your ass. This is not 4. This is 2 times 1 squared. What's 1 squared? 1. one. one. 2 times 1 is 2 minus 5 is? Negative 3. How we doing? So when I, have, when I plug an x of 1 in, I get a y of negative 3 out. So what about when I put a negative 1 in? When I plug a negative one in, what's negative one squared? One. one. What's two times one? Two. Minus five? Two. Holy shit, I get the same thing again. See, so we already know it's on a straight line. It kind of curves back on itself, right? Let's do a couple more just, just because. What about two and negative two? Try those two out real quick. Try to figure out the y values for those. Then we'll graph this, and I think we'll call it a day after that. Call it a morning, anyway. Some of you guys hopefully realize you only have to do one of these because the other one's going to be the same, right? If I square two and square negative two, I get four no matter what, which explains why it's shaped the way it is. The positive inputs have the same outputs as the negative ones do. That's why it's shaped the way it is. So what I get here, I get two squared is four times two eight. minus five. Three. Negative two squared is four times two is eight minus five is three. So I get a 3 for both of those. So let's graph this and see what it looks like. Where's 0, negative 5? Left. Down 5. I like it. Don't move left or right at all. Just move down 5. 1, negative 3? Right 1. Down 3. Negative 1, negative 3. Back 1, down 3. Is that cool? 2, 3. Over two, up three, 
negative 2, 3, back 2 of 3. I missed out there. So I know that a function looks worse, but what did I do? I plugged points in, and then I plotted the points that I got. And plotting points is simple. Now you don't have to know ahead of time what it's going to look like. Yes, ma'am. You're good? So how do I connect these dots, though? I do it in order. Yes. Like this. The speed. Yeah. So it's going to be this U, actually. Like that. Anything that's got a higher power or a different power than one has got to be curvy. An absolute value, if I graph an absolute value, it would be a V. Because what's the power on X? Absolute value of X? First power. So it's got to be straight. That would be a V. And why does it turn? Because absolute value can't be negative. It's the same reason why a parabola turns. They both turn for the same reason. That's plenty. I went a little bit further than we even need to worry about yet. But I just want to show you the same process works. All right. That's plenty. So get started working on your uh, test corrections. They're due when? They're due by the day of the next test. You've got time. So oh, please okay. use that time wisely. <laughs> give it on the day of the test. It's cool. Don't give it to me right now. That's crazy. <laughs> No, it's just late now. Yes, you do. It's just late. What did you ask? Oh. This is your test grade. Yeah. This is your current average. Your test quiz average. <laughs>